Here we are at Blade Show with Joe Holt, the owner of Holt Blade Works. And Joe, tell us a little about yourself. Where are you from? Absolutely. Um, my name is Joe Holt. I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I've uh, been making knives, uh, fixed blades, pretty much since I was a teenager. Uh, we've been making folding knives now for about six or eight months, I guess. Okay, and uh, what kind of volume, how many knives do you and your lovely wife make per month? I think so far we've made about 180 Spectres. Now, what were you doing before you became a part-time knife maker? I guess a better question is, what are you still doing? <laughs> Well, at, uh, right now I'm a principal software engineer at Rockwell Collins. So. so doing the software CAD drawings for the CNC machines wasn't really a hard transition for you, is that what you're saying? Yeah, learning the G-code for CNC programming was pretty straightforward. Now the fun thing is that it's a family affair. What does your wife do? Uh, my wife does all the hard parts. Uh, she does the anodizing. Uh, she does, uh, she's done some design work. She uh, does a lot of the customer interaction. She manages social media. She manages me, which is kind of a challenge. Okay, well, I'm going to pan down now and go ahead and show us this lovely knife. And what is the name of it? Uh, absolutely. So this is uh, this is the Spectre. This is our only folder that we've got. It's the first one that we've done. Um, it's a frame lock folder, as you can see. This is one of our high grade ones. We have three grades. We have a utility grade. We have a refined grade, and then we have the Prestige. This one's a Prestige. So this is uh, some of uh, Angie's fine anodizing. This is also the pattern on this handle, this checker pattern, is one that she designed as well. Uh, it's kind of a copper patina or a bronze patina. I can't remember which one. So in this knife, I don't know if you can see it on your camera, but right here, there's a tiny little screw. Uh, that screw goes to the detent, and by tightening and loosening that, we can control how much force it takes to flip it. I think you have a disassembled knife. Let's see the inside of the scales. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, this right here is the detent ball. This is the detent adjustment screw. So the way it works, if I loosen that screw, it backs it out and it puts more detent ball into the blade, which makes it more difficult to flip. Um, if I tighten it up, it'll start sticking up more, it'll reduce the depth of the detent ball and cause it to flip easier. So you can tailor it. We use a, a trigger pull gauge you know, so we can measure it. Right? When, when uh, we ship them out, we ship them at two and a half pounds. It seems like that's a pretty comfortable number for most folks. I prefer something closer to three or three and a half, but uh, most folks like about two and a half. I think that's what this guy's set at right now. Okay, you have some here that we can buy at Blade. If we were to order it on your website, what would be an expected turnaround time from order? So when you order from our website, we will have it in your hands in eight weeks. All right, well that's Joe Holt from Holt Blade Works showing us the Spectre. It's a great knife. Thank you for your time, Joe. Right, thank you. Okay, here we are with Joe Holt of Holt Blade Works. Now, Joe, you recently acquired a Tormac machine, is that right? We did, actually, yeah. Now, where do you put said Tormac machine in your home? Well, I think sane people would put it in a walkout basement or in a shop, but we don't really have either one, so <laughs> we had to come up with some other options. Uh, so for reference, the Tormac machine stripped down bare is 1,200 pounds. You know, it's fully dressed, it's probably close to 2,000 pounds. So we ordered one uh, the December before last, and I had a few ideas. One of the ideas was hire a moving company, and they took one look at the problem and said, we don't want anything to do with it. So that just kind of left, left it up to Ange and I. So this thing arrives, and my second option was I'm going to take out the staircase, use a car engine hoist to lower it down with a come-along into our basement. Ange wouldn't have any part of that, and incidentally, it wouldn't have fit through the hole in the floor anyway, so we decided against that. So, you know, it's the middle of December, it's cold outside, my garage is not heated, so I've got this big crated machine out there, and I, I just got some tools out and I started taking it apart. And, uh, you know, labeling the wires and stuff like that, so I knew how to put it back together. And I, I, uh, I was able to break it apart into pieces that were relatively light. I mean, the, probably the heaviest one I moved by myself, maybe four or 500 pounds, something like that. I got a refrigerator dolly and just wheeled it down to the basement like that. So the last piece, and the column of it with uh, the control box, I was afraid to take that part apart because there's a lot of wires in there. I think it was probably knocking on 700 pounds, very heavy. So I was able to get it on a dolly, but it was too much for me to manage by myself. So I called uh, my boss at work and he said, oh yeah, he says, no problem, I'll bring my son over. So 
he's, he's, he used to be a power lifter when he was younger, so he's definitely the right guy for the job. So he and his son got on the bottom of this dolly, and I got on the top, and we went stair by stair. We got it down there, but it was a lot of grunting and swearing to get there. Wow. If you ever move, how are you going to get the Tormac out of your basement? I'm thinking we sell the Tormac with the house. So. Okay. So I, all you knife makers, we have the house for you, and it comes up for sale, all right? Robbins, Iowa, you know, we'll, we'll set you up with a tour Mac in a nice house. It's so. a great place to make knives. Thanks for the story, Joe. Well, thanks.